After the last great war, new nations are beginning to expand. As the leader of your people, you choose what buildings to construct, what resources to produce, and hopefully you will succeed in leading your nation to greatness. Today on Tabletop Thursday, I'm going to take a look at It's a Wonderful World and give you a description of how the game plays and my thoughts on it. It's a Wonderful World was designed by Frederick Gerard with art by Anthony Wolfe. It was published in 2019. Its original publisher is La Boite de Jeu, and it was produced in the United States by Lucky Duck Games. Its suggested retail price is $44.99. The game is designed for one to five players. It plays in approximately 30 to 60 minutes, and its key mechanics are drafting and engine building. Now, to start off with, each player is dealt an, an empire card. The empire card will indicate the name of the empire you are playing. It will have an icon. It will indicate if there are any victory points that you will receive at the end of the game for your empire. So it does help to give you a, a, a kind of direction to go. It gives you a place to place the constructed development cards. And it indicates any production that you will generate you know, automatically each round. There is also a reminder down here on the bottom for how you will produce Crystallium, which is a wild resource in the game. It can be used at any time for any other resource. And I'll get into it to how it is created in just a minute. After each player has an empire, you will then set up the board in the middle of the table. It is set up as you see here, and it is always placed so that the materials are on the left, followed by energy, science, gold, and exploration. The game includes plastic cubes of each color, and you will place them in their relative spots on the board. There is also a spot for the financiers and the generals that are generated at times during the game. And there is also a spot for the Crystallium. Uh, the game centers around these development cards. The development cards represent science or buildings or other things that you are going to construct to, uh, to advance your empire. You can tell a development card because in the upper left, it has its construction costs, so these are the resources you will need to generate in order to construct this card. At the bottom, it will have its production value. So after it is constructed, these are the resources that it will contribute to your empire. It has victory, it may have victory points, which are indicated in the lower left corner. And at the end of the game, this is what the card will be worth. It also has a type. Each card does match one of the five types of resources that you can produce. Now there are two, there are two possible bonuses on each card. Uh, sometimes you will have a construction bonus. It is a one-time bonus that you will receive once you complete construction of the card. And the other bonus is the recycling bonus. At any time during the game, you can decide that you are going to recycle this card as long as you have not com yet completed construction. If you do recycle it, you will receive this bonus, and at any time you can, uh, you can place it on uh, a card that's under construction. Obviously, if you recycle it, you cannot use it to construct the card that you just recycled. Recycling means you will discard the card. Now... This is your play area. Your empire will be here in the lower left. As you gain cards, you will start by placing them in the draft area. You will then move them to the construction area. And once they are constructed, they'll be moved to the constructed cards area. So to start with, each player is dealt seven cards. They will select one of them and place it in their draft area and pass the cards to the left. Once the cards are passed to the left, you will draw a new card, 
and play will continue until all cards have been drafted. Now, after the cards have been drafted, uh, players will decide which cards they want to construct. So they will then move the cards from the draft area to the construction area, or they will recycle the card by discarding it and generating the resource indicated in the, re in the recycling bonus. Now, once all players have decided what cards they are going to construct, they are then going to move to the resource production phase. Resources are always produced in order, starting with materials, then energy, science, gold, and exploration. So in this example, we've generated two materials. And once you generate those, you will immediately place them on any cards you are trying to construct that have open spaces for materials. After you've generated your materials and place them on your construction, you will then generate your energy and the process will repeat. Now, uh, if for some reason a player does not have a place to put the resources that were generated, for example, right here we're generating science, but we do not have any open spaces for science uh, resources, we will then place them on our empire card. Once there are five of any color resource on the empire card, you will then place them back on the board and take one crystallium instead. Resources may not be removed from either the empire or development card unless it is to generate the crystallium or complete the construction. So once you've decided that these resources will be used to build the research center, they're already used. If you decide to recycle the research center after already placing uh, resources on it, those resources will be lost. They cannot be reassigned to another construction. Now, Crystallium can be used in place of any resource. Uh, so it is a wild and whether you decide to store it on your Empire card or nearby, it may be played at any time uh, towards the construction of a development card. Now, if a development card receives all of its resources, it is then considered constructed and it's moved to the constructed cards area. It's done this way so that that way you can see what resources you will generate. Uh, if you happen to complete construction of the card before the resources are generated, so in this example, if the nuclear plant is completed during the materials phase, then during the energy phase, it will generate its resources as well. So, after completing, uh, generating all of the resources, uh, you will deal another seven cards and start a new round. The game, take, as I said, takes place over four rounds. And after the fourth round generating resources, players will score points and the most points wins the game. So, what do I like about this game? First off, to me, drafting is, is relatively new. I know games such as Sushi Go have been out for a while now, but... We did not actually play Sushi Go for the first time until December uh, of 2019. So for me, this is still a very new type of game mechanic. Um, it's been very refreshing and a, a nice addition to game night. Uh, I do like how the recycling of cards and the developments that you're trying to construct influence how you draft. Uh, I think it, uh, you know, not only are you trying to 
keep cards that that may benefit your opponents. I think it does give you uh, a lot of a lot of options that you have to consider because you don't you know you have to to worry about what are you trying to build what resources do you need to generate things like that so um i do like that there is a a lot of uh a lot of different you know dynamics for the drafting uh in addition i really like the art the art is really high quality throughout every single card um every piece of of game component I think they did a fantastic job with the art, uh, and and to me it is one of the best parts of the game. Um, it's a it's a near future looking world, so you see lots of high tech things, lots of lots of fun fun things they put in flying saucers or the Ark of the Covenant or uh, you know the Lost City of Atlantis. Uh, there are um, there's a genetic modification card that um, literally shows a toddler with gills and webbed fingers and toes. Um, but it looks like a normal happy kid. So it's a it's a really fun batch of art. Um, I really like how it does convey a sense of the world that has been that has been developed after this 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 conflict. In addition, I really like the components. The game board is uh, heavy duty uh, cardboard. Um, it is not card stock. Uh, the general and the financiers are uh, a heavy duty cardboard as well. Uh, it looks to be a black core cardboard. Um, I don't know if that makes it any different, but it, it looks really nice, especially to not have the, the gray cardboard that, that you will typically see. Um, the, the plastic cubes for the resources, uh, most of them are transparent. The materials, uh, because it is a, a light gray or tan in color, um, it, those are opaque, so you cannot see through those. But all of the others are very bright, very shiny, um, you know, and just look really good on the table. Now there are a couple of things I dislike. Uh, sometimes it, for me, it is hard to find the strategies. Um, whether it's games like Magic: The Gathering or any other, you know, uh, deck building game. Um, I am not the best at putting the strategies together. Uh, I believe in this game, uh, out of about the six times we've played it, uh, I have won a couple, but for the most part, I do not do well in this game, in my opinion. Um, and, and it's because I, I don't, I don't see the combos and I don't see the strategies. So that is frustrating to me about the game. Uh, in addition, uh, the game does feel short to me because it's only four rounds. Um, I do wish that I could play more rounds. Um, but even though it feels short, it as I said at the beginning, it is going to take you about an hour to play. So, you know, to me, an, an hour of play is, is a, a decent amount of play time. So uh, it's not necessarily short. But it does sort of feel that way to me. Now, the art and the resource generation mechanic, um, I do think they drive the theme. But for some reason, I wish it was a bit better. Um, I the, the art really does convey the world. Um, but I... I don't know. It There's, there's something that feels like it's missing. Um... But I'll be honest, it's not enough to make me dislike the game. It's just something where I, I feel like there's something missing in, in its uh, in its theme. But it that's that's just me. Obviously, it's everybody's got something subjective. Uh, one thing I am mixed about um, 
is when you alternate the passing direction for the draft. Uh, on the first and third rounds, you will pass to the left as normal. On the second and fourth round, you pass to the right. Uh, I do I do like the mechanic because now you are having to pay more attention to the other players. You're having to uh, not just concentrate about what the person to your left is doing, but also the person to your right. You know, if you don't want to pass something one way, um, you know, in the next round, it does give you an option uh, so that you can do something uh, or, you know, you, you can ease up, but then also have to worry about a different uh, a different strategy. Now, I say I mixed because I like the strategy, but we are really, really bad at remembering to alternate uh, you know, the direction we pass the cards uh, to the point where we literally will say, don't forget, pass to the right, pass to the right multiple times, and we will still forget. So uh, I like the mechanic. I'm just really, really bad at using it. So that's why I gave that one a mixed. So in conclusion, I do have to say, I really like this game. Um, even if it does frustrate me with the strategy, um, one of my favorite things about it, although it has nothing to do with the game itself, is that my 16 year old has actually been willing to play it with us. And for some reason he decided he does not like playing games with the family anymore, but he's played this a couple of times with us and gotten into it and done very well. Um, so it was fun because it, it did bring the family together a little bit more. Um, so if you like dra drafting games, I highly recommend this one. If you haven't tried a drafting game, I'm not sure that I would recommend this one as your first drafting game. Uh, but I would definitely recommend that you try it after a pl after playing a game like Sushi Go uh, or, or something similar. Um, but overall, I do... Uh, I do recommend it. Uh, I do hope you give it a try. Um, I know that there are some expansions and uh, and some scenarios that are uh, are coming available, but they are not available at the time of this recording. Um, but I do look forward to getting those and trying some some different strategies with it, even though I'm not very good with the ones that are there now. So anyways, I do hope you found this review helpful. Um, please do give a like, subscribe, drop a comment. I definitely like to get feedback, and I want to hear uh, what you guys uh, have to say about the game. Um, you know, if you've got other recommendations for good drafting games, let me know. I would love to check them out. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.